Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Master of Science in Management clip out ceremony for 2020. Thank you all for taking time out to help celebrate the achievements of our cohort of 2020. Throughout our next hour and 50 minutes or so, uh, we're going to give the opportunity uh, not to really focus on pomp and circumstance. Certainly that was, uh, there will be opportunities for that, but to truly reflect upon the experiences of our 13 graduating MSM students. Uh, all of you have had a role to play in their journey, and we welcome your reflections as well uh, in celebrating their achievements. We're also joined by three distinguished alums of the MSM program, uh, Josh, Brianna, and Nadine, who will also share some words of wisdom, uh, having led the path ahead of this cohort. So with that being said, uh, let me introduce my co-host for today's event, uh, Patrick Gore, who has been kind enough to put together uh, a reflection in video, if you will. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Patrick. steel facility at, at Bow Steel. As you can see coming up now, they're treating the steel to produce it into the, into the rolls, and this is uh, the first part of the process. We're at AstraZeneca. It's a pharmaceutical company here based in Shanghai. A global perspective is so important if you want to be a leader in business and for whatever industry you prefer. Let's give Patrick a virtual round of applause. And hopefully that 
uh, little montage was able to uh, allow the MSM students to kind of reflect upon their journey. A uh, journey that started off uh, last fall and culminates 10 months later here in the month of June. So it's titled a clip out, a clip out ceremony. And some of you have asked, well, what does that really mean? So I know I'm kind of calling upon Allie uh, to kind of uh, jump in here a little cold, but uh, she certainly was able to share in your journey uh, in the outdoors of the Rocky Mountains. So uh, I'd like to invite Allie to just kind of in her own words, explain what clipping out means as it relates to this unique program. Sure. Allie? Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Lol. And so happy to be here. So happy to have a chance to celebrate you all this morning. I've gotten to connect with many of you across the past week. So happy to be here. Um, the, the image of the clip out or the clip in is really connecting back to the way we started this program together. So um, the actually the, the video that Patrick put together was such a great way to think about what we did to begin the experience was actually very literally clip in by virtue of our harnesses onto the rock face. And so if you think back to the time when we were beginning this experience, there was all sorts of metaphorical importance and actual importance to the clipping in, in the sense that it became a time when we um, relied on one another, had to really deeply trust one another to go through this experience that was going to have us at some of our edges, some of our um, literal edges in that case, or maybe emotional edges or intellectual edges. So the metaphor of the kind of clipping in from that perspective was really to um, think about how we were going to go through this experience experience together and that we were going to through the year be clipped into a collective harness where we were going to be engaged in supporting one another really actively through that expansion and through that sort of playing at each of our edges. So the clip out ceremony I think is is beautiful in the sense that our time together here is kind of coming to an end um, in its current version. And it's also true that we've got this kind of enduring connection of support to one another that will last well beyond the, the formal clip out ceremony when we may no longer be connected to the same rope, but what we're doing is um, going off into the world into our own individual directions, but still connected by this kind of fundamental esprit of support and encouragement and holding each other as we go off into the next chapter. So that's a little bit about what the clip out metaphor is about and what the ceremony is about. Thank you, Allie. And if we want to think about it, it's the simple end of this chapter. And now you get to write your next chapter as you move on from the MSM program and those that you have shared that experience with. So with that sharing in mind, uh, we'd like to invite the MSM students to uh, virtually step forward and share with their cohort, share with us. Um, and this recording uh, will be made available to your family and friends. So please don't forget them in the course of the reflections that you think about over the last 10 months. But think about how has this experience uh, impacted your development? What do you leave this program most proud of? And what is your fondest memory? And so what I'd like to invite uh, is our distinguished honorees of this event to say a few words about that. What experiences impacted your development? Uh, what are you uh, leaving most proud of? And what's your fondest moment? Who would like to get us started? Everybody's going to do it, so depends like on it. if you want to go first or not. <laughs> There's job. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here uh, to congratulate us. Wish this was in person, but we do what we can. Um, so the the experience, uh, how has it impacted me? Is just uh, it has definitely improved. Uh, uh, I would say my self confidence in myself to be a leader. 
Um, and uh, I guess it, it's also shown me that, because uh, I'm one of the older people in the cohort, I guess you're just never too old to learn more stuff. Um, so with that leading into what I'm most proud of, uh, I would say it's just the, the completion of the course. Um, I didn't come here with the mind of failure, but it's always in the back of my mind that uh, I'm just not good enough to do it. Uh, so uh, completing this is uh, what I'm most proud of. And for my fondest memory, uh, I can't say I, there's just one exactly. Uh, there's uh, from the fall up to the spring, uh, there's been uh, great memories made with uh, several people of the cohort and uh, faculty members. Uh, we went to uh, bowling, we went to China, we had a Halloween party. Uh, the trip itself, just starting off, was a great memory to start. So I, I can't say that there's one that particularly sticks out as this year has been uh, incredible for me. Thank you. We can give Job a virtual round of applause for getting us kicked off and started. And again, thank you so much. Um, you have made an impact on us too, Job. So thank you. Who would like to go next? I'll go next. Um, so I guess in terms of uh, how the experience has impacted my development. Uh, to kind of echo what Job said, um, being the oldest of the cohort, um, it was a little intimidating for me to go back to school after being out of school for almost nine years, <laughs> not really sure what, what to expect in graduate school. Um, so that was kind of the scary part of it for me as well. Um, but in terms of how it's impacted my development, I think kind of starting with my the ideal self course, it allowed me to really look internally into myself and kind of strengthen my, uh, you know, my attitude, my demeanor, uh, my critical thinking, uh, you know, taking the ethical classes, develop my ethical judgment, uh, taking some of the other courses like organizational psych, developing my organizational perspective and kind of my business acumen. But overall, just being a better and stronger and, and um more positive-minded individual, I think, is is the big thing with that. Um, in terms of what I'm most proud of, just putting myself out there to go back to school and to kind of rejuvenate my life and rejuvenate my career path and really kind of start off on a, on a new path altogether and see where it takes me. Uh, so this was kind of like the starting point, actually. And so I'm looking forward to where it will take me moving forward. And I have Dee and my cohort to think for that. Um, and I think for my fondest memory, uh, it happened pretty early on, actually, despite everything that's happened uh, with my cohort, all the great experiences and all the great connections and all the great comments and conversations. The, the most fondest memory for me happened very early on was actually uh, the final day of our cohort outdoor experience. I remember, we were all, it's like the last 20 minutes, we were all sitting in a giant circle waiting for the bus to pull up. And we were just sharing our experience of the whole thing and uh, sharing what we liked most about each other. And it was at that moment I realized that even though we'd only been together for four days um, on that excursion, I already had felt like I was closer to my cohort than I was to virtually anybody I went to undergrad with for four and a half years, uh, which says a lot about how close we became over a four-day span. Uh, so for me, that was my fondest memory, and and frankly, that hasn't changed. Uh, I think I'm much closer to my cohort than virtually anybody I've ever gone to college with. So um, that's what I'm. Well, that's definitely my most fondest memory. And uh, thank you to to everybody who's helped us along the way, um, and thank you to my family who helped me along the way. Uh, it's been a great experience, and uh, I look forward to what the next one is. Excellent, CJ, and a terrific accomplishment, and thank you for sharing. And keep that in the back of your mind. How are you going to stay connected to this wonderful group of people that you shared the last 10 months with? And make a commitment to keeping in touch, 
That will be a key. Who would like to go next? I can go. Iman? Yep. So the program by itself with all the classes, materials, and experience helped me to refine my skills uh, and, to know, and to know how to use them effectively. But the most important things is the people who I have met. Uh, I'm very proud that I know them and some of them and considering some of them as my friend. Uh, so yeah, I can leave <laughs> the broad feeling of the friendship that I have from the program. And for the memory, uh, we have a lot of good, funny memories, uh, but uh, the last day of the backpacking, uh, when we wake up in the morning and the snow cover, cover everything, uh, it was uh, it was very different for me because I have always saying that I feel I'm Colorado, but at that at that day I feel it. Um, yeah, and <clears throat> sorry. At the end, I would love uh, to thank all of you for everything you have done for me. You were very supportive and kind. You made my you made my last year uh, in Denver fabulous and memorable. Uh, thank you for your friendship. I'm very proud that I met you and I cannot wait to see how you will impact this world positively. I'm pretty sure that you will do great in your life. And I want to apologize for anything that, any bad thing that I have said or done. For sure it wasn't intentional. And I have that I left a good things in everyone. That's all. <laughs> Thank you so much, Iman. Who would like to go next? Uh, I can I can go next if. Uh, if All right, go. Anthony. <laughs> All right, uh, cool. So, uh, how has this program impacted me? Uh, I think going into this program as an individual, I had a lot of experience uh, managing more uh, tactile experience, just uh, kind of being thrown into it, not really having practical skills or applications to apply. Um, so, I think you know a big part of this program has taught me the skills uh, to implement. Uh, different ways to impact each other people and to be an effective leader. Um, I think, uh, and especially in my specialization field of like auto body right now, uh, I think uh, it's really helped with the type of people that I interact with, not necessarily people like that are highly educated, but uh, lower education and lower skill levels and things like that uh, in the labor intensive field. I think a lot of this, uh, the skills that we've learned have helped me with that. And I've seen it helping me as I've progressed week by week and work in both school. Uh, what's been my favorite memory? I'd say my favorite memory, I, I think pretty much uh, all the 10 months have, have been a great time. Uh, I can't really say one particular event's been the best. Uh, I think the uh, camping trip was a great experience and I think it, was a, it really helped us get a lot closer to one another. Um, the class time was great as well. I think having such a small cohort and knowing everybody, it just uh, amplified the learning experience. Um, created great conversations in class and things like that because uh, I did go to a smaller undergrad but knowing people the way we did it, it really helped learning um, and then just lastly I'd just like to thank our professors and admin uh, you guys have impacted my learning a lot I really appreciate everything that you guys have done for us uh, and then I want to thank uh, the cohort uh, it's been nice knowing all, all of you guys and I look forward to uh, staying connected and seeing where we go from here thank you Thank you, Anthony, for sharing. Who would like to go next? Go on, you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> I guess I'll go. Hey, uh, RJ. Uh, the feeling I'm most proud of is actually going back to school to get 
essentially what I wanted out of this program. Uh, before, before like just randomly sort of moving here to Colorado, I was working in, in a museum and art galleries, but I knew that I wasn't doing a good job and I didn't have the training. So I've actually almost gotten everything I've wanted out of the hard skill training in terms of being a manage, uh, manager and leader out of this program. So that's, I guess finishing this is what I'm proud of, but I still have my eyes set on an MBA in a few years after getting some more work experience. So still a lot left to do. And I'd say the fondest memory, again, would be the camping trip. I was actually, I actually hated it at first a lot. I was very mad. And like the build up to it, I, I just kept complaining and complaining, like why, like why? And then actually the actual camping and hiking part also really made me mad just because it showed the differences in physical capability, but it was actually a very good teaching, teaching lesson and, and teaming and how you're just thrown into different teams and who you work with and what to, you know, not to have really any expectations, but to be open. So I think I actually learned a lot from that camping trip. And then the rest of the class is built, built on that experience. In the classroom, I'd say my fondest memory would be all the debates we had where they could go on for 20, 30 minutes where we were just arguing, really. I mean, they were called debates and whatnot, but I'd say that was the best and that was a great way to learn. So all the discourses, I'd say. And um, yeah, I'd say thank you to the faculty and all the staff and thank you for this program because for what I wanted out of uh, professional like development, I got what I wanted is a good, I mean, it's a good starting point. So, but I have to continue to learn. Thank you, RJ. And you touch upon something very important um, that learning is not a moment in time. It's a lifelong journey that you will be on. You'll always be learning. And the key is how do you take that um, and make it better for you? So thank you for sharing that, RJ. Who else would like to go? I can go. All right, Gian Marco. So everyone, uh, hi to everyone. And I will say that this experience affected my development because I came here to meet another country to see how, how is it out of Europe. And Definitely every day I learn something about Americans and not, not just Americans, but every every country that I met. And that was great. I mean, I came with one goal in my mind. I think I met, I accomplished that. And then I'm most proud of this master's degree itself because I mean, I wasn't a good student. I never been a good student. And even at high school, like my mom, my sister was, well, you probably should focus on something else like cooking, you're really good at that. Maybe you will be a great chef one day. And I say, no, I want, I want, I want to be something, something more. So I want to be in the business, not in the kitchens. And so getting this master's degree is something great for me. Something to say, hey, I did it. And I really like this situation. And what I'm most proud of, my best memory is the court. That's not a specific uh, memory. Is every time that I was trying to uh, say something, it was my thoughts were confusing, and then someone say, "Well, I think Jamarco wants to say." They tried to help me, and that was simply something really nice. But uh, I really like that, and everything, all the classes, basically. I will say thank you to the faculty and to everyone. I came here with. Uh, an expectation that would be should be uh, the you know, the American system would have been different, but it was way better than what I thought about. So, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Gian Marco. And it's a shame that we didn't get to sample some of your cooking. I'm kind of sad about that. Maybe you'll have to come back in the future and bring some, uh, some in for the department. 
We sure. would like to do that. I love cookie. It would be my pleasure. Which is good because I love eating. Oh, great. <laughs> we did just a little bit on the trail, but he had a very limited kitchen. So next time with a fuller, oh. with a fuller pantry. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Thank you, G and Marco. Who would like to go next? I could go next. All right, TJ. Um, so starting off, I think this program just really allowed me to expand my prior knowledge gained here at DU. I was one of the few students who attended DU for undergrad as well. So to be able to stick around another year and continue my business career at Daniels, um, I, I just couldn't be more grateful. And just like the, ex the experience I've had at, at Daniels has been uh, a, a one that I will definitely remember in, as for the rest of my life. Um, Something I'm proud of uh, was just kind of my, I'm proud of myself for experiencing so many different things for the first time. Like that backpacking trip really got me out of my comfort zone. Um, I remember getting, being on that uh, Zoom call with Lowell during the summer before the program. And I found out I was going to China one day. That was pretty crazy. Um, and yeah, that having my first and probably only Thanksgiving dinner to be a duck feast. That was definitely quite an experience. Um, and, I, and I had a couple memories I wanted to share uh, that really stuck with me. Just for mainly our, our trip to Shanghai was an unbelievable experience uh, and a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I was very uh, thankful to have that opportunity. Um, a memory from that trip that uh, I really enjoyed was just one random night. We were just a, a small group of us were just sitting at the, the hotel bar till I don't even know what time in the morning, just chatting about nonsense, but it was just a great, great bonding experience to get to really know some of my cohort members. Um, and lastly, one funny memory from that trip was one night uh, we had most of the, the, the cohort in myself and Pat's room, again, very, very late and job and Pat decided it would be a good idea to full on wrestle. And we didn't find out until the next day that Patrick Orr was our neighbor in the hotel and was <laughs> kind of concerned with what was going on, but we were able to clear everything up and um, it was all just a, a good laugh the next day. But yeah, I just wanted to thank all of the, all of you guys and my cohort. And um, I, she's, she's actually at work right now, but I definitely wanted to give a shout out to my girlfriend who, pretty much picked up her life, moved out here to Denver with me while I was doing grad school and, uh, you know, found a job here. So that was definitely a great support for me while I was out here. Thanks everyone. <laughs> Who did win the wrestling match? I mean, they both, I think they both lost cause they had all had mad rug burn. <laughs> Well, we each have our different scars from education. That, that would be a first that I've heard of, um, uh, a, a rug burn from a learning opportunity. Thank you, TJ, for sharing that. Okay, since TJ made me laugh, I'm gonna try to keep that going and not cry. <laughs> um, I'm having flashbacks to my high school graduation where I also cried during my speech. Um, I told y'all this was gonna happen. I've grown so much from this program through my classes, through my friends in this cohort, and through the support and guidance of all the faculty in the program. Um, I'm most proud of staying true to myself and building on that through the program. Honestly, I can't choose one fondest memory, but any memory that I have with any of my friends here is going to be a highlight for the rest of my life. Like CJ, I also didn't get to connect with people in my earlier college experiences because I went through it so quickly. and. I'm happy knowing that I will walk out of this program 
feeling like I have not only made some of the best friends, but also a family. I want to say thank you to Sam, to all the faculty that I had the joy of working with, not only as a student, but as a GA, and my friends and family for for constantly supporting me through this crazy journey, through all the laughs and tears. We know they were many, <laughs> and the smiles. <laughs> Thank you. Now you're gonna make me cry. I'm sorry. We're, <laughs> we're so proud of you. We're so proud of all of you. And it's tough to reflect sometimes but it's it's when we do that that it solidifies in our own memory how important it was for us so thank you for sharing and we we all give you a virtual hug as iman says um, to celebrate your achievement thank you Paige. who would like to go next I can go. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so, you know what to expect for a sort of business oriented management program. And I was just um, hugely um, sort of really thankful about how, how great all the courses were and how in depth they went. And they were sort of a lot more um, holistic than I thought that they would be. Um, the American education system is so much more about kind of broadening yourself rather than just learning the material, which um, is what I was far more used to coming from a, an undergrad in the UK. And I was just thought the courses were really, really great and really rounded me as a person um, a lot more than what I was expecting. Um, most proud of um, completing the course, as a lot of other people have said, I, I share that feeling and using what I've learned to get a job uh, in this quite tight job market right now. Um, I'm really proud of how, how all of these skills have translated into that. So um, I'm really grateful for everyone that helped me doing that. Most fond, um, the trip to China. Of course, I think that we won't be forgetting that one in a long time. And I think um, maybe we won't have the opportunity to visit China much in the future if sort of things continue on their current trajectory. So being able to get in uh, that trip was hugely exciting for me, particularly having lived in Hong Kong and sort of visited China in the past. Um, being able to see how they do business there was such a great opportunity. In particular, in the, in the video, without the beard, I was thinking, I don't recognize that person. Um, being able to visit the Bao Steel plant was a highlight. Um, also the smart, stores if any if everyone remembers that um place I, th I found that place fascinating and uh credit to job i think he definitely won the wrestling match i had to tap out due to exhaustion um so he's definitely a, a lot more physically fit than me um credit to him and just thanks to all the faculty for making the experience amazing and and what it was so thank you very much Thank you, Patrick. Who would like to go next? Uh, I can go. All right, Matt. <clears throat> yeah, so coming from an engineering undergrad here at DU, I actually kind of wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I th think originally I kind of went approach this is like I have no idea what I'm doing so management sounds cool um, and this experience has definitely been something that I think has helped me tremendously and I realized all of the gaps that were in my undergraduate degree that I there's no way I could have learned it 
as efficiently and in a fun and like memorable way as this um getting to meet all these people making great connections uh i think i've I've talked more with some professors here than i have any in like all four years of undergrad so um and same with the people in the cohort i feel i i know some of you guys better than some of my friends from before and so i think this experience has impacted my development in helping me realize the things that that i care about and also my weaknesses that i've had and that's why like the thing i'm leaving feeling most proud of is the ability to have uh it maybe not so much i have definitely improved but also learning like how to improve i think a lot of that and also i think a lot of these skills i'm going to carry with me into the future and i'll be able to use in the future uh i i think as even in engineering people think it might all just be like math and stuff but i, I think this things that i've learned here are really important to uh anything i'll do in the future so i really appreciate that and then as far as my fondest memory i don't know how it couldn't be sleeping in a tent with job and john marco on the camping trip i mean so that's a once in a lifetime experience right there so um i'll definitely never forget that <laughs> but uh really really I, I i've this whole year it was awesome and probably my favorite year of school i've had so thanks to everyone for making it possible and i've enjoyed my time with you and i'm sure it won't be the last i see of, of a lot of these people so thanks <laughs>
Um, this program has given me more confidence in terms of interview prep and business confidence, as well as how to be more patient. Um, also starting this program on a camping trip was very difficult for me because um, like, although this was an amazing experience that I'll never forget, I never thought I could go on a camping trip for more than one day. Um, just because I've never been and don't particularly like the outdoors. Um, but I realized that I could do anything if I set my mind to it. Um, and the one thing that I will never forget about the camping trip is the first night I was absolutely freezing my butt off. I didn't have a sleeping pad. I, I was offered a sleeping pad and didn't take it because I thought I was stronger than that, but I wasn't. Um, and then I was looking for one of the camp guides, Anthony, at like two in the morning asking for a sleeping pad. I got lost, couldn't find his tent, couldn't find my own tent, tried finding Anthony from our cohort, found his tent. He had to help me. And then he went back, but then I was like, Anthony, I can't find my tent. <laughs> so he had to help me get back to my tent. So that was a good memory. Um, um, but my fondest memory was probably in China. We all got very close and got to experience an international culture and I got to show some of my cohort more of my culture. And I want to thank all the professors for making this program so wonderful and for giving me the confidence to go out in the business world and succeed. You all have had a huge impact on my life and I'm forever grateful for that. I'm so lucky to have formed the relationships I did with my cohort and I never got to experience that in my undergrad as I was always in a class of 100 students plus. Um, and that being said, this also goes for the professors. I have formed many relationships with the professors here and I'm grateful for all the help that they have done for me. So thank you all. Way to go, Annalie. And you didn't cry. That's Almost okay. did. There'll be more time. There'll be more time. Trust me. There'll be more time. All right. I believe, Hannah, you're the last. Let's go. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, this program has impacted my development because I've gained the ability to ask better questions with confidence. And I think um, that led me to get my job that is starting in August. So, super proud of myself for that. <laughs> Um, but what I'm really most proud of is that um, I told myself before the year started that this is just moving from Chicago to Denver is out of my comfort zone already. So you have to put your heart in everything that you do. And I really did that because like RJ, I did not want to go camping. I'm not a camper. <laughs> and um, I was really scared when Lowell said we were going to China. But I did both of those things and with pleasure because I, they're really cool things that I did. And um, I think if you ask me like 10 years from now, what's your fondest memory? I can just say that I got my master's degree because this whole year felt like a blur. But if I could pick one thing, it's, it's that um, Cal came into my life. So it's really cool. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, Hannah. And thank you for sharing. Did I forget anyone? I've got my checklist, so I think everybody had the opportunity just to make sure I'm not perfect. All right. So it looks like it's about 1047. What I'd like to do is take a break. Um, maybe get some more tissues, coffee, uh, and then come back in about 10 minutes, just slightly before 11 o'clock. And now we'll turn the tables to the faculty, staff, and our alumni uh, to share with you some thoughts, some ideas, some things to reflect upon that they would like to share with you as you begin this next chapter uh, of your life, this next journey into your career. So I'm gonna pause the recording at this point and we'll resume in 10 minutes, but leave your cameras on. Feel free to mingle virtually and share amongst each other. Um, but we'll see everybody in about 10 minutes.
All right, welcome back everyone. And thank you all for sharing your reflections, uh, your most um, intimate thoughts. We appreciate that. Uh, now it's time for uh, our alumni, our faculty and staff to share uh, some of their thoughts and reflections. So at this point, I'd like to invite our alum, uh, alumni to share just a few words. Uh, I don't know if Nadine yet has joined us, but she said- I'm she, here. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi, Nadine. Um, so Nadine, Bree, Josh, who would like to go first? I can go ahead and start it off. All right, Nadine. Great. So congratulations and thanks for having me. This is so exciting. So my name is Nadine Quays and today I wanna to share with you all what I've been up to since graduating from the program in 2018 and four pieces of advice that have benefited me on my journey. So my undergraduate degree was actually in psychology and I always thought that once I graduated with my BA in psychology, I was going to grad school for psychology. Then one day I received the email about the MSM program and after reading about it, it made me realize that, yes, I do enjoy psychology and it did allow me to master the people side of things, but now it's time to learn the business side. So during the program, I actually chose to do a marketing internship with a software company as my elective. And when I graduated from the program, the company offered me a full-time position as a marketing communication specialist. And in that position, I was exposed to every facet of marketing, I designed and created websites, I planned and executed events, conferences and webinars, I wrote and edited content for a client newsletter and so much more. So after feeling like I learned everything I could in my position, I worked with my manager to begin transitioning into marketing project management. And today I'm actually in my second job post-grad school and my position is a hybrid of a project manager and a scrum master at T-Tech, which is a leading global customer experience, technology, and services company that works with Fortune 100 and 500 companies. And I do project management for cross-functional projects ranging from quarterly campaigns to developing and launching products. And you know, think of a typical project manager. I do project plans, task trackers, Gantt charts, ultimately trying to help the team stay within scope, budget, and time to create, to create quality work. And then for my Scrum Master position, I have actually been helping the marketing department implement the Agile methodology as a way of completing their projects. And Agile is an iterative approach to projects that allows self-organized teams to respond to change quickly and deliver value to customers in less time than traditional waterfall projects. And Scrum is the framework we use to bring Agile to life at my company. And in Scrum, there are three positions, the Scrum Master, which is what I do, product owner and the development team. And as a scrum master, also responsible for ensuring the team understands and practices the values and processes of agile and scrum. And I run the scrum ceremonies, which includes scrum planning, daily standups, retrospectives and demos. And an organizational agile transformation takes about two years to complete. So once we're done helping marketing, our marketing department implement agile, we're going to help all the other departments implement it as well. So that's just a quick glimpse of what I've been up to since graduating from the program two years ago. And I thought I'd leave you with four pieces of advice that I found benefited me on my journey. So first, be confident whether it's in an interview setting or the workplace. No matter your age or work experience, this degree holds a lot of weight. We did such an intense program in a short period of time where we learned relevant information and work with real companies. So you have every right to confidently market yourself. Second, be resourceful. There will be times when you don't know something at work and your manager will be too busy to help you. So research it to learn it by yourself quickly. And your manager will really appreciate you taking initiative. And third, don't be afraid to, afraid to speak up or share your ideas. It might seem intimidating when you're in a, on a call with executives, but a lot of millennials are the ones shaking things up at companies because they offer a new, fresh perspective that allows them to come up with innovative approaches to solving everyday problems. 
And last, which this one's very important, make sure you have one-on-ones with your manager weekly to focus on your career development. It's so easy to remain stagnant and comfortable, but having these one-on-ones will force you to think about the trajectory of your career and your manager will also become invested in it and will be more likely to help you progress. And hopefully something I just said today resonates with you and congratulations once again. Thank you, Nadine. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Bree, Josh, who would like to go next? I can go next. All right, uh, Bree. So first off, I have a seven-month-old puppy. So she starts like randomly barking. I'm sorry. And I'll try to get her to stop doing that. Um, she likes to frequent a lot of Zoom calls. So she also jumps in. Sorry about that, too. Um, so first off... I'll talk about kind of like where I've been after grad school. I kind of had a different like path that took me to where I am now, um, but I definitely wouldn't change it, even though I gave myself a hard time about it then. So during grad school, I worked for Cherry Hills Country Club, and then I took over as their director of catering and events. So I got to handle a lot of money, which was a lot of fun. Um, but I also quickly learned that that's not what the real world was gonna be like going into a corporate position. So that was a lot of fun for me during that time and I gained a lot of experience working with a lot of just high executive clients and things like that. But then when I moved into corporate world, I started working for a digital creative agency and I was a digital marketing analyst for them for about a year, year and a half. Um, and that also brought me a lot of just different experience about um, like agile project management um, and different digital experience through Google Analytics and a lot of coding work. So that was also really helpful just because our world is in a huge digital tech age. So if you can go into that route, I would definitely highly recommend it because even if you look at jobs now, a lot of them are in the digital tech kind of field. So if you can gain any type of knowledge in that area, I would try to hop on that train as quickly as you can. Um, and then I was offered, I was kind of recruited by Red Lion Hotel Corporation, and now I'm their director of field marketing for that corporation. So it kind of took about two years until I was kind of in a position where I was a little bit higher up and I'm able to make decisions, but uh, definitely a lot of experience along the way. So um, some stuff that I gained from grad school that I definitely think is helpful now. Um, I gained a heck of a lot of experience um, and confidence in what I was doing. I was an undergrad at DU also, and I majored in sociology and marketing, and I minored in English and business. So I was kind of all over the place at that campus, um, but I think grad school really taught me a lot about being confident in myself and the decisions that I make, um, and to give yourself a lot of grace in what you do, because nothing is one straight path. It kind of just meanders all over the place. So definitely a lot of experience gained there. Um, I also think that I grew personally and professionally. Um, and I think a lot of that had to do with the professors that I kept in touch with during grad school and then after. Um, and definitely one of the things that I miss is definitely just chatting with Sam like every day of my life. Um, I think Sam had a huge, huge, huge impact on my life, and now she's one of my best friends. So shout out to Sam if you got close to her, because she's definitely great. Um, and also to Bud, because Bud is definitely still a huge part of my life now um, and has helped me professionally network as well as like kind of get to where I am job wise. Um, so I'm currently on the American Marketing Association's board of directors and he connected me with them and that's kind of how I landed my job. So my advice to kind of branch from there is to network, network, network. Um, getting a degree doesn't really guarantee you a job. It definitely helps put you in a higher professional setting having a master's degree, but Denver is still small enough that networking is one of your biggest assets you can have into gaining any sort of position. So I know that Nadine, Josh, myself, any of us that were alumni are also happy to help you network into different career opportunities because without utilizing my network and kind of gaining different experiences from them and using them as mentors, 
I definitely wouldn't be in a director position that I am now two years after I graduated. So definitely network everyone with everyone that you can. Um, and yeah, just kind of give yourself some grace and know that that master's degree will definitely help you get to where you want to be, but just to continue to work hard and kind of drive for what your dreams are. Um, yeah, so kind of over level type of advice, but once you get into a position that you want, just really start digging in and learning more about what you can in that field and different ways that you can utilize mentorships within your different careers. So happy to help be a professional network resource for you. Um, connect with us any way that you can. Thank you, Bree. Josh. Very well said, Bree. Um, so first of all, I just want to say congratulations on your massive achievement. Um, this is a huge deal. So congratulations. Second of all, um, I'm a little jealous to hear about your guys' experiences. Uh, we didn't get to go. We, we did some outdoor experiences, but we didn't get to go camping. We didn't have any wrestling matches. Um, and we certainly didn't get to go to China. So I'm really jealous of all of that. Um, and when I heard that Lowell was going to be taking over the department and the great team behind him, I knew some really cool stuff was going to happen. So um, I'm just super jealous and excited for you guys and to see where your guys' career go. Um, so yeah, I'm going to share a couple of quick tips um, about surviving in this weird work from home world we find ourselves in. Um, and then I'll get out of here and let you guys celebrate. Um, and then I'm going to go look up job on Spotify for uh, DJ Rex. So <laughs> we'll see if he's on there. Um, after my time in the military, I did nine years. Um, I went to DU for my bachelor's in international studies. Um, and my trajectory was to go work for a government agency. And it was just, I, I knew it was time to make a change. Um, and I got an email from Daniels. And I took a chance and I ended up in the MSM program and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, I met some of the best people that I still keep in contact with on a regular basis. And now I work at Merrill Lynch Wealth Management. Um, so yeah, if you guys wanna get into finance, Annalie, I know you've reached out to me, um, but anybody feel more than, more than, I'm more than happy to help anybody. So um, my first piece of advice is from a wise man uh, named Lowell. You may know him. Um, he told me, whatever you do in life, don't let your vocation get in the way of your career. And what I took from that was no matter where you go, no matter what your job is, your career always continues and you can move around and you can go up into management. You can take demotions or you can move throughout your career, but just because you are a pilot doesn't mean that that's what you have to do forever. Um, you can make any, you can get to any position you want to. It just might not be the path that you've set out. Um, number two. So Albert Einstein once said that uh, a person who never made a mistake, never tried anything new. And failure is one of the greatest teachers that I've ever had in my entire life. So don't be afraid to fail and go out there and try new things. And you might make a fool of yourself. But one thing that I like to do, and this kind of comes with a little challenge, is put yourself in an uncomfortable position every day. Um, you'll be so much better for it in the end. And number three, uh, one of the quotes that I've kind of lived my life by is from Isaac Newton. If I've seen farther, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. So whether that's a lesson about your emotional bank account from Bud or ripping apart 10Ks and talking about Tesla and business strategy with Lowell or learning about structure and organization, all of these people are the giants that you're standing on the shoulders of. So be grateful to them and use them as a resource and your journey doesn't, with DU doesn't end here. Um, you can keep in contact with them. You can use career services, all of these people that are willing to help and make your life and career as successful as you want it. So. Awesome. Thank you, Josh, Bree, Nadine. 
At this point, uh, I'd like to now open the microphone to uh, our faculty and staff uh, who have also played an uh, important role in your 10 month journey. We may not be able to get to everyone. So I do invite you to share uh, with the students in the chat box to the lower right. You can add comments. We'll save those and we'll share them with everyone. Uh, so if we don't get to uh, your specific uh, opportunity to speak today, please do avail yourself of the chat feature within um, this uh, meeting. And without further ado, um, who would like to get us started? Uh, I'd like to go first uh, um, because I have to leave at 1130. Uh, so, uh, Congratulations, folks. I'm, I'm proud of you. Um, I know how hard you've worked, uh, and it was really my pleasure to be uh, with you uh, for the two classes that we had together uh, in the winter and the quarter, in the winter and spring. I must admit I like the winter better because we were sitting together in a room as opposed to looking at each other on the, the screen. Uh, it, was, uh, it was really a pleasure for me to be with you. And uh, as Cindy said, while well, uh, during the interlude that we had here, uh, th that's what our classes were like. And that was really cool. I mean, uh, as a group, uh, you all were incredibly engaged. And we had just, I thought, tremendous conversations. And, uh, and I just uh, really look very much look forward to all of our meetings because of those uh, conversations. So uh, I want to congratulate you again. Thank you for all your hard work, uh, for putting in the time, uh, doing what it takes to uh, finish up here. Uh, and also uh, Nadine, Josh, Bree, uh, uh, you know, we have stayed in touch, but I'm really uh, so happy for uh, all of you to see how well you're doing in your career. And I expect to see some of you who are graduating here today uh, sharing stories uh, in a year or two about how well you're doing because I know you're all going to get out there and kick butt in your careers. So congratulations. I'm sorry I'm going to have to leave a little early, uh, but uh, you know, rock on folks. It was really a pleasure to uh, get to know all of you. Thanks, Brad. We appreciate you. Thank you, bud. Next up. I'll go. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so first off, good to see you, Nadine, Bree, Josh. It's it's awesome to have you guys back and to hear your voices again. And uh, yeah, Josh, you know Lowell's name and Isaac Newton and Einstein all in one sentence. You know we're in good company right now. <laughs> hey, Bud, you too, everyone. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, to the group right now. You know, I I honestly. To me, you know, when I look at the screen right here, I see just an incredible amount of talent. And I know that there's talent because I, I was in the same classroom with you for an entire quarter and I've seen you demonstrate that talent. And, you know, in, in one way, it makes me extremely excited to see where you're all gonna go. But then in another way, I guess the one thing that I would emphasize is just because there's talent doesn't mean that it's easy. You know, it's, it's uh, the talent that gets you through the hard times, it's the talent that gets you to turn the corner and to pivot when you need to. It's the talent that'll pull you through. Um, and so I encourage you to rely on that and to have that self-confidence when you pursue either it's a career or a, or a new opportunity or when you think that you might be taking a risk and doing something that might be uncertain for your future. Just know that you've got the talent to pull it through. You know, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy, but you're going to be able to do it. And as, you know, as others have already said here, there are tremendous resources at the school and we're always here to help. Um, we want you to stay in touch, uh, definitely, whether it's just career related things or, or just where you're at in life. Those are the, those are the benefits you get from coming to this place. And, and we definitely want to follow through with that. So congratulations, guys. Again, uh, my favorite moments, I, Lowell had mentioned, what were your favorite moments? Too many to count. I would say all of them have to do with my personal conversations with each of you outside of the classroom, the things that we've talked about around your ideal selves and where you want to go in your life, all very inspiring. But all that was before jobs, gator dance, or 
whatever that thing was. <laughs> so, I mean, that might've overtaken my favorite experience, but yeah, so it's just, it's just been a real, real pleasure to get to know each of you. So thank you for involving me in your lives and best of luck moving forward. Thank you, Andy. Oh. Next. Oh, Doug, go ahead. Okay, I, I would just like to uh, congratulate everybody. And uh, my memories of the program over the last year are kind of scattered throughout the program, uh, welcoming many of you as you arrived, uh, and then helping uh, a number of you prepare for the China trip, and then getting to spend a bit of time together uh, in China are all very special memories. And then more recently in the uh, uh, spring quarter, spending time with those of you who didn't go to China and uh, having some uh, very deep and meaningful conversations. It was a very small class. It was a very nice format for Zoom to really think about the things that were happening in the world and to reflect on why we were on Zoom and uh, what that had to do with uh, global, uh, global business. Uh, I, uh, I think that, uh, you know, there was the question raised of whether we'll ever go back to China. Uh, I think the answer is yes. Uh, I think that the preparation, the, the value of your trip is not so much that you'll never have a chance to go again, but it is that we'll be continuing to work with China over our entire careers, uh, no matter where we uh, end up. And, and so the understanding uh, of that visit, I think, will be something that you'll value as you move uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the time. These are really tough times that we're that we're in right now, and and uh, and it's it, it, no other way to to uh, say that. Uh, having having acknowledged that, though, and even the strange format that we're in right now, uh, the pandemic will come and go. Uh, the pandemic will come and go uh, uh, with with tragic results and maybe years of aftermath before we really get back to uh, something that seems. Even, even close to normal, but it will come and go. I think the scourge of racism, though, that we're experiencing as we observe what's happening will not come and go unless we take ownership to make a difference. And I think that's one of the things that uh, we have to kind of reflect on. How do, how do we contribute to our organizations and our companies in a way that makes them truly more inclusive and, and truly more embracing of uh, the concept of the oneness of humanity? Uh, and if we really begin to think about that, we have an agenda in front of us that can give us optimism. Because uh, at the end of the day, it is the people on this screen that will be in charge of the world moving forward. And they have, you have, uh, the opportunity to work with everyone to make that world a better place than it is uh, right now. I'm also optimistic. I think it was Josh that reminded us that Einstein told us that we need to fail in order to learn. So when we see the world fail to manage a pandemic effectively and the terrible tragedy that results from that, we are watching the world learn. And we have the opportunity to participate in the next round as it happens. And when we see the violence on the streets, we're watching the world learn and we have the opportunity to uh, make it better. So as uh, sometimes uh, discouraging as what we see is, we can also see reason for optimism. And uh, as a matter of fact, I don't think there's any more exciting time to be going out into the world than right now. Uh, and so I wish you all tremendous uh, success in every endeavor that you uh, take. And uh, I also hope that you'll all stay in touch because the greatest joy for professors is to stay in touch with former students and see what's going on. Thanks a lot. All said. Dawn? Yeah, that's tough to follow. <laughs> that's unfortunate for me. No, um, that was really well said. Thank you. That needed to be said, I think. Um, these are tough times for sure. Um, I think what I'll remember the most about this cohort, though, is just the fun that you guys had. The class was so engaged and so, like, it was just, like I got a lot of energy every time I came into the classroom with you guys. And for me, from my perspective, I was teaching you something that nobody was really comfortable with. I think Amon was the only one that came in with any sort of real accounting 
background or numbers background. And, you know, what made you all successful was that, you know, you took something on that you weren't comfortable with and you really worked hard um, and you didn't back down and you were really successful. And I think that's something that if you can do that throughout your career, you're going to be really, really successful. Um, so keep that up, stay engaged, ask the questions, don't be intimidated to not have all the answers. Um, and I think just to end kind of on a funnier note, um, I will always remember Hannah and her dentist story. So <laughs> we were talking a lot about COVID because we were talking a lot about current events and that was obviously dominating the news cycle at the end of our winter quarter. And I had a dentist appointment that I had to reschedule right after the winter quarter ended. And I pushed it out as far as I can. So every time I go to the dentist, I will think of Hannah and the sneeze. <laughs> so good luck, you guys. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Dawn. Who would like to go next? Can I go? It's Carrie. Sure, Carrie. So uh, on behalf of the Graduate Student Services Group, um, first of all, thank you to Josh, Brianna, and Nadine for being here. It's really fun to see you. Josh, I remember the call. I remember the first phone call. <laughs> so it's just delightful for us to think back to the time when you called, not sure what your next step was, and then to hear your success story. So i um, really grateful for you three sharing your words of wisdom and your stories and just very inspirational, um, I'm sure, for all of the students, but also for staff and faculty as well. Um, before I say congratulations to the students, I just want to on behalf of the grad student services staff, just say congratulations to our management department. Just a really, first of all, a really beautiful ceremony this morning. So thank you, Sam, for organizing this. Beautiful job. Um, congratulations to Lowell and Amy, who just recently received some really high honors at our staff and faculty awards. So deserving, but- And Andy and program. Sam. <laughs> so uh, this is a program that has really had a bit of a struggle in the past several years at Daniels and, and frankly in graduate education. And you have um, really brought this program to a level of, of that I'm so proud of. I'm so proud of the success that I've seen in our alumni, but uh, the connections that you've created for these students. Graduate education is so much about connecting to new people and digging deep inside yourselves and really finding some confidence. And you all have done just a remarkable job um, successfully doing this for these students. So thank you for that. Kudos to the whole management group. I'm really proud and kind of excited that we're gonna, that student services will be working a little bit more with students in the future. Um, congratulations to all of you students. We don't work with you too much because you do have a core program, not a lot of electives, but we have thoroughly enjoyed uh, seeing you go through the program, enjoyed having you in the graduate studio, participating in clubs and in case competitions, and uh, really fun for us to see your growth in the past 10 months. It's just remarkable to think of where you were a few months ago to where you are now. Um, we look forward to your continued engagement and um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you on one of our um, hopefully it won't be a Zoom call um, in a year, but <laughs> we do look forward to having you back on campus and share, sharing your words of wisdom and engaging as alumni. So um, go out, do great things, and stay in touch. Thank you, Carrie, and thanks to all in the Graduate Services Office. Thank you so much. Can I go next? Yes, thanks. So. So, yeah. First of all, 
Uh, congratulations to everyone. And I just uh, echo everyone just said that it was great, great pleasure to have you in winter quarter. It was like, like I found myself in the winter quarters looking forward to reading your assignment, which is really rare. And then looking forward to joining you in the classroom and having all this discussion, excellent discussion and then fun activity. My fondest memory is I actually, I had the honor of the C, the preview of C uh, jobs, uh, disco move today, like a fun move yeah. today during the winter quarter. We had a scavenger um, hunt, it's called uh, Chase, Goose Chase, and I was honored to see CJ, RJ, and jobs, disco move, and others sing the friend song, and et cetera. That was um, the favorite moment of my, uh, the winter quarter. So, my maybe the one comment tips that I'd like to share you with you all is as you most of you know I moved from South Korea, Canada, like Montreal and the Minneapolis to Denver. So I moved several times and I changed several times my career path. Like I was trained as a teacher, became the sales rep at Johnson and Johnson and became the management consultant and again back to the university professor. And there was so many times whenever I see the challenges, uncertainty, and I found myself speaking that, saying that this is not me. This is not me I know about myself. And eventually I find, I learned to add one more question at the end of the, this is not me. This is not me, or is it? So we are much more complex people than we think. So there are a small portion of the myself that I didn't know already. So, you know, I'm usually a very mean person, but there are a small portion of me, very kind. So I can utilize those small portion of kindness whenever there is a new challenges. I think, I hope that you can do the same. You are very complicated people. So there is, whenever there is, you have to face new challenges. You don't have to become a wholly new person. Just that you utilize the underutilized aspects of yourself to deal with the new situation. So best wishes to you all. And it was really, thank you very much. And it was really great pleasure to have you all in the program. Thank you, Sangsu. Who would like to go next? Cindy. I'm going to see if I can follow Sung Su's great remarks. Um, first, I have to absolutely have to start out by saying, Hannah and Paige, you are so patient with me for always putting up with me calling you by the wrong names. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know who you are. Believe me. I have no idea what happened in my brain. Um, I'm old, I guess that's what you could say. So uh, very, very sorry for all of that. Uh, and with that said, um, you know, we, we remarked uh, yesterday in class that it was really ironic that we were ending the class by talking about change and the, the vast amount of change we've seen just in the last you know, two months. Um, never thought that this would be the way your program would end, but you did so with such enthusiasm and we had so much fun together. And I think we also still learned some things together. We had seven other people from outside the program in class and, and uh, you you welcome them into your community and um, I hope you guys are going to stay in touch with each other as we move on. Um, I had I had the privilege of having you at the very beginning of the program in Org Psych and then the privilege of having you at the end of the program with negotiations and to see the maturity and the growth just over those few months was was really wonderful to see. Um, as Doug said, there are a lot of special rewards that, that teachers get. 
and uh, you guys are certainly right up there at the top. Um, you know, they say that, that teachers touch the future, and that is absolutely so true. Um, I feel like the future is in good hands. We can't predict the future, right? We can't predict it, and we really can't control it very much, but we can control our own reactions to it. And we can stay agile, we can stay eager, and we can keep caring about making the world a better, a better place. So, can't stop teaching even now. Ask questions, always ask questions. Don't make assumptions, ask questions. Listen to the answers that people give you. Listen to what they're telling you. You don't have to agree with them, but you have to know what it is. And absolutely see the world from other people's perspectives. You'll gain so much, you'll open up, look at RJ even wants to go camping again. I know he does, he's just not saying that. He's gonna go next weekend. We're gonna have to get some secret footage of it. Um, so, one of the things that happens to me after all of these years of teaching is that my heart just keeps getting bigger and bigger because each of you have a place in my heart and that will never change. So please, please know that I'm always here for you no matter what, even if it's just to uh, consult on new costumes for job, but he probably doesn't need much help with that. So it's been my pleasure, absolute pleasure to work with you guys and I see a lot of good things ahead. Thank you, Cindy. I think we have a few left. Who else would like to go? Well, I will speak. This is Allie. Hi, Allie. Hi. Hi, everybody. It is so fun to see. Hi. It's so fun to see you all together um, again. And and really what I just want to speak to is um, what a treat it has, got, it has been for me to be at the very beginning of this with you and then to be with you throughout the journey in various ways and then to come to today. Um, and when I think of you guys as a group, there's two things that are really big in my mind. And one is something you guys have spoken about so much today, which is um, stretch and stretching into these places that are really deeply uncomfortable. So I love, it's been such fun to hear about um, the memories of the camping trip job. I totally forgot about the um, Neapolitan and that <laughs> it's just also to remember about our camping trip together. Um, the thing that I observe about you guys that still remains true is when we headed out on this adventure together, um, it was into a deep zone of stretch for many of you. And what I appreciate so much about that, as I have seen from you guys all throughout the year, is such a willingness to be in that space. Such a willingness to be curious, a willingness to go into this uncomfortable, unknown territory, and a willingness to not only tolerate it, but find a way in any number of ways to make it fun, to make it enjoyable, to figure out what you're mining for in terms of the lessons. So Doug, I really appreciated what you were saying about the depth of um, stretch that I think all of us are being invited into with what we're heading into as a community and as a globe. And my invitation to you guys is to continue your stretch. And what I also know about this group is I will never forget seeing any, net, well, two pieces. One, those of us who were hiking in the back, chanting and singing songs, we were singing in Swahili, singing some songs as we brought up the back of the group and the people who had already summited bounding down the mountain to come back and to retrieve the backpacks of those of us who were behind. And there was a joy collectively in everyone in those experiences. And for me, what I appreciate about that was not only the stretch that showed up for each of us in our own individual ways, but the deep compassion and the connectivity of the community. 
So the two things that I would invite you and encourage you is to keep stretching, um, keep expanding yourselves into those spaces of growth, um, and keep with your compassionate hearts and um, building your community that you can really lean into and trust. So um, congratulations. What a gift to get to be with all of you this year, to get to know you, to get to cheer for you. Um, we'll be here continuing to do so as you go into this next chapter. Thank you, Allie. Anyone else want to chime in? Can I add a few words? Absolutely, quick? Sam. Um, so I don't know if you all know, but you are the last cohort that I get to support in the MSM program. Sorry for my dog sneezing in the background. Um, and it means so much to me to get to do that. My favorite part of my job is getting to support and advocate for you all. Um, I just want to remind you all to take care of yourselves, to make sure that you're continuing to uplift each other and the people around you. You're going to be in leadership roles and be making really important change in the world. Please make sure that you're helping others to not burn out and to stay in the fight and to keep doing good work. I'm so proud of you all. Thank you for sharing your time and experiences with me and, and congrats. Good job, guys. Thank you, Sam, and congratulations to you as you venture off uh, into your career. Um, it has been our pleasure uh, to have had uh, you supporting us, um, and hopefully in some small way we've been supporting you, but I just think it's been more you helping us. Um, but uh, also uh, very, well-deserved award that you received uh, on behalf of all staff at the Daniels College of Business. You truly are a rock star and will continue to for uh, in our hearts forever. So thank you. Thank you all. Anyone else? Any last? I know there's a few left. Uh, but I'll just not tap gonna... in really Okay, quickly. Amy. Um, just wanted to, again, um, you know, echo the sentiment of congratulating everyone and uh, echo Allie's um, mention of stretch and just how impressed I was with everyone really tackling learning Salesforce as part of your springboard class because I know, um, you know, some of you have varying technical backgrounds, some have had a little exposure to that tool and others had not and you really embraced it. Um, and thrived in, in the learning. And I'm really looking forward to reading your final reflections here um, in the next couple of days. Um, but just wanna echo also what has been said about being um, a part of a broader Daniels network, a part of a broader Daniels community and being able to use all of these folks on this call and your professors, your alumni network um, as a resource because we have you know, this whole infrastructure here to support you as you move into your next phase as an alumni. So, um, you know, you guys have probably gotten sick of me offering to help you learn more Salesforce, but I, that offer still stands. Um, anytime, you know, as an alum, if you encounter that tool, I am happy to help or for any other reason, um, please do reach out, but really proud of you guys and, um, just don't forget that you're part of our, our Daniels community for life. Thank you, Amy. And thank you for stepping in and teaching the springboard this spring. Anyone else before we have just the final last few comments to be made? All right, well then, uh, last but certainly not least, uh, my co-host today, uh, Patrick Orr, has a, um, a little visual gift for you. Hey everybody. First of all, I wanna let you know, one of the reasons I love working with students is you keep me young at heart. So TJ, Job, Patrick, Anna Lee, and anyone else who was in that room next to me that night in Shanghai, I was just happy that everyone came out alive. So, 
was very much enjoyable to get to know all of you. And as I put together these videos for you, it made me realize that you are a very tight cohort. And as a DU alum, I am in touch with all of my fellow students that I graduated with, and I see that happening within your cohort as well. So with that, I have one more thing to show all of you. Congratulations, everybody. Ooh. And thank you, Patrick. And thank you for the wonderful effort you put into these very moving videos. And again, I hope everyone uh, will reflect upon these in the many years to come. At this point, I'd like to also now invite uh, Amy Hamilton to say just a few words. Well, I guess if I'm gonna do that, I have to unmute my mic, don't I? You, you guys, you are such a special group. And I just wanna say, um, first of all, add my congratulations to you, the class of 2020, um, to all of the other congratulations that have been said here. I wanna thank you for sharing this year with us. We have all been very privileged to be partners in your journey as lifelong learners. The challenges you have faced this year are unprecedented, truly, at least in my lifetime. And you have met them with grace and open hearts and open minds. Um, I don't wanna belabor this next point because others, including Doug Allen, have spoken so eloquently about it, but I do want to acknowledge that you deserve so much more of a celebration than what, we were, than what we are able to do under the current circumstances. Um, without a doubt, the time will come when we can shake hands, 
share hugs, and raise more than a virtual glass to you and what you have accomplished. And I look forward to that and sharing that with you. Um, in the meantime, please know how proud we are of each and every one of you. In the years to come, we will watch you with even more pride as you make your marks. You will face complex problems ahead as leaders and managers, and you are ready. You'll be asked to make important contributions to your teams and organizations, and you are ready. May you go forward to live lives that make the world a better place. May you live the Daniels motto of pioneering business for the public good in a way that is personally meaningful. So thank you again for this year and our very best wishes to all of you, the class of 2020. Oh, one more thing. I gotta say this. You guys rock. Awesome. Thank you, Amy. Well, I get to add my last comments. Um, and it has been my distinct honor and privilege to have gotten to know all of you and worked with you. Uh, I get the distinct honor of seeing you bring everything together for the spring challenges with Comcast, with uh, Crocs, with Four Seasons, some very large companies here in the Denver area. And I hope that you avail yourself of staying in contact and networking with them. Uh, they are uh, excellent companies, uh, but even if you have no plans to work there, having them in your network, having them there as maybe a potential business mentor uh, is, is, a, is not a bad thing to have. Um, you've mentioned many of you about the staying in touch. So let me challenge you. As you are wrapping up this program, the time that you have been spending in study groups, reading, preparing, doing your assignments, all of that time now gets back to you. Don't waste it. Use that time. Use that time to continue learning. Learning is not just a moment in time, it's a journey. Challenge yourself to continue learning about things that you don't know anything about or things that interest you, that you do want to learn about. Don't let the time get sucked into everyday life of having to figure out what you're going to eat or when you go to the grocery store, or what bill to pay. Use that time to really benefit yourself. And I'll challenge you. I mean, I wouldn't be a teacher if I didn't give you a homework assignment. I started reading Bob Iger's book. I don't know if any of you have started reading Bob Iger's book. It's The, the Ride of a Lifetime. It's about his 15 years as CEO of the Disney, the Walt Disney Company. And uh, I've just started, but I think there's some life lessons in there from a, a person who has done fairly well for himself. He has been strategic in looking at the company and his own personal future. So if you have time and you are looking, you're having book withdrawal, right? What do I read now? What do I read now? Um, put that on your book list for the summer. And then last, I'm going to challenge you again to honor what you've said, that you're going to stay in touch, that you're going to stay in touch with each other, that you're going to stay in touch with us, uh, faculty and staff at Daniels, at DU. We're going to challenge you because what's going to happen is some of you may move away. I know some of you already said that you're planning to move uh, to different places in the United States, maybe the world. That distance will kind of put a strain between you and staying in touch. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, I haven't talked to him or her in a while, but I'll do it next month. I'll, I'll do it next year. Don't let that time slip by. Stay in touch with one another. You all have a unique chapter in your lives that all intersect over the last 10 months. 
Make sure that that tie remains strong and that you all look to each other and share and celebrate your accomplishments in the future, just like we have accomplished so much in celebrating today. So with that, I congratulate you all. I thank you all. And for all those that were able to find time to be on today's call, some of which had to leave early and we understand that. Thank you all for celebrating the Master of Science in Management Cohort 2020. And we wish you all the very best as you journey on. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Congrats, guys.